What's up, guys? This is Rich from KME Gamer TV. Today, we're going to be looking at Intel Haswell E and the X99 chipset. Before I talk about Haswell E and X99, let's get a little background information on the Haswell series. Approximately one year ago at Computex in Taipei of June 2013, Intel announced and released its fourth generation of the Intel Core i7 series, known as Haswell. Haswell's main upgrades were a lower power usage and its new 4600 integrated graphics chip. Haswell was then again this year upgraded to the Haswell Refresh with a fresh new lineup of Intel i7, i5, and the i3 chips. Now the E-Series focuses on the i7s, but let's look at a little history first. Back in 2008, the first generation i7, the Nehalem. Then came the Sandy Bridge. And then after the Sandy Bridge was Ivy Bridge. And then finally Haswell. And now Haswell Refresh. The first generation of i7 had 45 nanometer process architecture and 731 million transistors. Today it uses a 22 nanometer process and has over 1.4 billion transistors. Despite these improvements in CPU technology, there is a schedule that seems to govern progress. This is known as Moore's Law. Moore's Law is the observation that, over the history of computing hardware, the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. Now, it may not be as solid a law as physics, but its consistency seems to stand. Another model adopted by Intel since late 2007 is known as TikTok. Basically, after every microarchitectural change, Intel follows their next generation with a die shrink. This is the tick, and a new microarchitecture is the TOC. Now getting back to the i7, last year when they launched Haswell, their flagship processor was the Intel i7-4770K. It launched with support for the Z87 chipset and was socket LGA1150. Now Haswell is a socket LGA1150, which its previous generation, the Ivy Bridge, was LGA1155. Now, the upcoming Haswell E is socket LGA2011. Now, what exactly does this mean? This is more or less a description of the land grid array of which the CPU actually seats on in the motherboard. Now, the old CPU technology used PGA sockets, or pin grid array, as you can see, obviously because of their pins. With all the processors out there to choose from, it's important to understand exactly what you're looking at. Now let's go and take a look at the actual processor name. Using the i7-4770K as an example, the first word Intel Core is the brand. The i7 is the brand modifier. The first number indicates the generation. And the following digits are basically the processor SKU number. Now this particular product line is the K, which stands for unlocked. This means you can overclock freely without any restriction from the processor. If it does not have a K at the end, that means you cannot overclock. The S class is a lower power, lower performance ratio. And finally, the high end of each generation will have an X. Typically a hexa-core processor, this stands for Extreme Unlocked. Now the processor is only as good as the chipset it sits in. So lastly, I'm going to talk about the chipset associations. With Haswell, it came out with Z87 support. With Haswell Refresh, it came out with chipset Z97 support. And Haswell E will come with chipset X99 support. This is good information to know, but what exactly do these chipset associations mean? To better explain the chipset associations, let's take a look at X is for enthusiast class, meaning it would say X99, X89. Z is the performance class. Although with dropping prices, it is quickly becoming the norm for price performance ratio. H is more mainstream, typically lower priced, and more commonly used in HTPCs and gaming machines where people do not intend to overclock. Q or B is usually budget-friendly for work-related or other miscellaneous, usually not related to gaming. 
Now, the X-Series motherboards are only for the Intel Extreme Core, which would be the Haswell E, Ivy Bridge E-Series. Now, when you look for a motherboard for your new processor, you need to make sure that it's the correct motherboard for your socket and chipset type. But now, how do you determine which motherboard you actually want to get? For example, let's look for a Z87 motherboard. In this product by MSI, it's listed as the first three numbers of the title. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Now, some will take it to the extreme and plaster it all over the product packaging. This is no longer necessary because now you understand what you're looking for. But if all else fails and you still are not sure if your motherboard you're looking at is compatible, it will always say the socket, which will be also listed on your processor. Since we're here to talk about Haswell E and X99 motherboards, let's look at some of those boards now. Set to launch with the Haswell E is the X99 chipset. This will be the only compatible chipset with the Haswell E processors that will support socket 2011. And as seen here, it is also will be listed in the motherboard name. Now, as far as picking which motherboard's right for you, well, that all comes down to the price, performance, and features list, which only you can really choose that. But the most definite, notable advantage of going with the Haswell E and the X99 chipset will be this is the first generation to support DDR4 memory. The DDR4 RAM modules are set to be available at the same time as the X99 and Haswell E launch. Now, the Haswell E is set to launch on August 29th. This date was pushed up from an earlier September launch. Now, which versions of the Haswell E will launch and how much can we expect them to cost? The top of the line version will be the Intel Core i7-5960X Extreme Edition. It will boast eight cores, be stock clocked at three gigahertz with a boost of 3.3 and have 20 megabytes of L3 cache. The cost will be approximately $1,100. The second in command will be an Intel Core i7-5930K. This one will have six cores, stock clock of 3.5 GHz with a boost of 3.9 GHz, 15 MB of cache, and approximately $630. And finally, the last one will be an Intel Core i7-5820K. Similar specs as the second one will have six cores, 3.3 gigahertz base clock with a turbo of 3.7 gigahertz and 15 megabytes of L3 cache. The price is estimated to be between $300 and $400, but is not yet completely known. All three of these CPUs will support GDR4 RAM. All three of these CPUs will all be chipset X99. And all three are socket LGA 2011. Now, these chips are definitely aimed at the higher end of computer enthusiasts. But with all these new features and upgrades, it just might be worth the cost. I will definitely be watching for the release of these with much anticipation. I think that will about wrap things up for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned some things. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on the YouTube page or at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash kmagtv. This is Rich for KME Gamer TV. Until next time.